Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow and I want to take you back in time, back to 2008 when the Audi RS6 had a 5 litre V10 with twin turbos. Also, the BMW M5 had a 5 litre V10. A Mercedes E63 had a 6.2 litre V8. I'm going to review this car obviously and to do that, I'm going to talk you around the exterior design. Mmm, what wide hips you have. Show you inside, Zage better than me. Tell you what's good about it. Yum. What's not so good about it. That's going to hurt. Poke it with a stick. I broke my stick. And of course, take it for a test drive. <laughs> I could just do that all day long. Now, before we get into all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. And if you're into cars and car reviews, click on the pop-out banner up there to download the new CarWow app. It's even got number plate recognition technology, so you can scan a number plate of any car in the UK and it'll tell you how much it's worth. Right, and let's kick off this review by talking about the design. And you'll notice I have my trusty CarWow stick of truth here because the first thing I want to show you is this. You've got the RS overall exhaust pipes, but unlike the modern ones, which have two other exhaust pipes in there, this is good old fashioned one single unit. No fakery whatsoever. I broke my stick, damn it. Though I'm not sure that this diffuser actually does anything, but it does look quite cool. And obviously you have the badge at the back which says, it is the RS6. It's quite interesting looking at the shape of this car compared to the latest RS6, which I've recently reviewed. Click up there to watch the video, by the way. It's just round and smoother. It's not quite so aggressive looking. It just looks smarter and a little bit more under the radar. Well, you've got big alloy wheels, 19 as standard, so you could get 20s. There's quite a bit of satin going on to brighten up the exteriors, the roof bars, around the windows. Blacked out windows, obviously, to look a bit more badass. There's some discreet side skirts and slightly bulging wheel arches. Shouldn't miss this, though. More satin here on the door mirrors. No black pack on this car, like you get today, to properly murder it out. Around the front, you do have new bumpers compared to the normal A6, more aggressive, more satin surround, RS badging, and vintage. That's fake. Oh my God, this is where it all began, back in 2008. God damn it. Anyway, I'm getting a bit carried away here. What I want you to do is click on the pop-out banner up there to vote. Do you think the RS6 was better when it was a bit more discreet, like this 2008 model, or do you prefer the way it's now gone more aggressive and quite obviously a performance car, like the very latest one? Let me know. Here on the inside, there are some RS upgrades over the standard A6, but yet again, it just is a little bit more subtle. The most obvious is the flat bottom steering wheel, which was quite unique back in the day. It says RS6 on it as well. You've also got some RS sports seats and they're electric and heated, but those are the most obvious things. But there are some other upgrades, such as these mill door handles, which feel lovely though, they don't really stand out. You do have RS6 on the sills as well, but you don't notice them when you're driving the car, nor the aluminium sports pedals. There are RS6 dials though. When I say RS6 dials, it says RS6 on them. And you do have some extra information like boost pressure from the turbos and oil temperature. But the dials themselves do sort of look a little bit old because they remind me of the face of the robot in Wally. Which incidentally came out in 2008, which was when this version of the RS6, the C6, was launched. Now, when it first came out, the infotainment system was pretty basic. So it runs on 2G mobile phone technology. Woo! In 2009, they upgraded it to have 3G mobile phone technology for a quicker connection. Looking at the graphics, yes, it's feeling pretty dated now, but the rest of the cabin doesn't. Actually, I think it's aged well. Definitely better than I have. Here's a picture of me from back in 2008. I do look a lot younger. These last few years, turning out all these videos, have taken their toll quite clearly. And quality in here is good. Better than my face. And um, what's not so good though is this. Look at the sunroof, right? I can't see the sun. You can either have it open, come on, or shut. You can't actually have the blind back. And it's tiny. Which is a bit annoying considering this thing cost £80,000 back in 2008. Rather expensive then, just like the current car, which is £100,000. Here in the back, you've got some more RS seats. They're quite nice for rear seats, actually. In terms of space, it's about the same as a modern A4. So there. One of the main selling points of the Audi RS6 has always been the fact that you get supercar performance with family wagon practicalities. Big boot, 565 litres, which incidentally is the same capacity as the latest 
RS6. So in the past 11 years, there's been no progress in the boot department. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. One of the problems with the Audi Quattro four wheel drive system is that it pushes the engine quite far forward in the car. As a result, it hangs out over the front wheels. So I'm stood at the very front of the engine. I'm now going to move to the center of the wheels, which is where the front axle is. There. Can you see how far it's slung out over the front? Now that does make it harder for this car to turn at higher speeds. So if you're on track, you will experience quite a bit of understeer, I would imagine. Thanks to depreciation, our performance cars such as this are reasonably affordable to buy. But the reason they depreciate so much is because of the repair costs, which can be quite a lot. For instance, there's a seal in the oil pump in this car, which can fail. It's quite common, actually. The part only costs 50p, but to repair it, it's going to cost well over a grand. In fact, some technicians want to take the whole engine out which means a job could cost 4,000 bloody pounds. The latest RS6 has a very rear wheel drive bias Quattro all wheel drive system, which can send up to 85% of the engine's power to the back wheels. With this older version though, it can only send up to 60% of the power to the rear wheels. So it doesn't feel as sporty to drive. The trip computer on this car says that it's averaging 18.7 miles per gallon and it hasn't really been driven particularly hard either. Yes, I now understand why Audi has been downsizing its latest RS engines. This C6 version of the RS6 is a bit of a chubby bugger. It weighs 2,025 kilos. So it's 75 kilos heavier than the brand new RS6, even though that car is packed full of way more safety kit. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The RS6 has uprated brakes, so you've got 390mm discs up front, 350s at the back, that you can upgrade to carbon ceramics, and then the 420mm at the front, and 12 kilograms lighter. You get adjustable dampers as standard with comfort, dynamic, and sports modes. Also, the shock absorbers are linked in a diagonal pattern, so when the car goes around the corner and leans, the compressed shock absorber pushes oil into the other one, which levels it out, keeps the car nice and flat, apparently. Oh yeah, V10 loveliness. Ain't no sound enhancing going on here. No, no. One of these old RS6s gives you a lot of horsepower for your money. So a decent one will cost you about £25,000. This one is a Minter with less than 20,000 miles on the clock and you're looking at around 35 grand for this. And for that, you can go on Carwow and get a brand new Audi S3 hatchback including discount. Now if you want to see how much you can save on any car, click on the pop-up banner up there to check out the best deals on CarWow, the ultimate car comparison website. Oh look at this, it's a 5 litre V10 from a Lamborghini, only they've gone and slapped on two turbochargers as well. As a result, 580 horsepower which is 20 horsepower less than the current RS6 so we've only gained 20 horsepower in over 10 years. Hmm. Now, if you want even more horsepower, £1,000 upgrade to the ECU will get you 700 Oh yeah! I expect all of you would like to see me launch this old RS6. Well, quite frankly, I don't think it's wise to do it. It's an old car. It wouldn't be fair on it. It wouldn't. I'll tell you what, we'll put it to a vote. Click on the pop-out banner up there to vote whether you want me to do a launch and time it, see what it does 0 to 60. Come on, cast your vote. You done it? All right. And have a look what you said. That's a surprise. The majority of you wanted a launch. Okay, so here we go. My specialist timing gear. I'll just put it up here. Get the car into sports mode, sports traction. So Addy says this thing should do 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. What am I going to do? <sighs> you chose to do this. If it breaks, it's your fault. I'm blaming you. Okay. Oh, it's quick. Blimey very quick and it's excellent at putting its power down wow there we go that'll do see what we got 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds that's insane i'm glad i timed it now good choice guys good choice that is really impressive anyway that's enough of this nonsense let's get this out of the way there we go bits and pieces everywhere blah yeah get rid of that let's continue with the drive because Oh my gosh, this thing is rapid. 
It's not as quick as the latest RS6. That'll do it in like 3.4 or 3.5 seconds. But for a 2008 car, it's well fast. And I love the way this engine puts down its power. You don't have the big slugger torque of the latest twin turbo four liter V8. It just builds power throughout its rev range and it loves to rev. Redline, 7,000 RPM. It's so nice, so smooth. I like the sound of it as well, though this V10 does sound better in the Lamborghini because it's got no turbo, so it can really, really sing. But still, nice noise, nice smooth power, and it really does just shift like some kind of missile. Whoa. <laughs> I could just do that all day long. Oh, it's so smooth. It's, it's lovely and I'm getting 8.8 .8 miles per gallon now because of that. Let's talk about the other aspects of the driving experience. So before I do that, I'm going to put the stability control all the way on for safety's sake. I'm going to move the gearbox out of sport mode and into drive. See what it's like at kick down. So three, two, one, kick down. That is pretty responsive. Good. I like that. Now let's put it into manual mode and see how quickly it can change gears. So I'm accelerating, paddle, shift, paddle, shift, paddle, shift. So not bad, not as fast as a dual clutch auto, but good enough. I'm impressed with that. Let's try the brakes out. I'm gonna do an emergency stop. Here we go. Whoa! It's a greasy road, so the ABS is working out, but those brakes are strong. That's good, you need that in a car that is this quick and is over two tons in weight. Steering wise, the steering feels a bit weird. So it's sort of heavy, but in an artificial weird kind of way. It points the car exactly where you want it to go, but it doesn't feel great. A bit odd, really, not a fan of it. Prefer the steering in the very latest RS6. Another thing that I think is way better in the brand new car is the chassis. So I've got the suspension in sports mode and it's blooming uncomfy. You can feel the car shake and shimmy over any bump and it's unnecessarily hard. Fair play, it does stop the car leaning in the corners, which is good, but it's not good over bumps at all. Let's put it into comfort, see if it's any better. I notice it's slacking off, but still it feels a little bit brittle. In fact, when I've read reviews about this car, journalists wrote the fact that it felt brittle. It's a good metaphor. As a result, you do get quite a few rattles and squeaks occasionally, even though this is a low mileage car. And that's not so good. I don't like that so much. Another thing is the whole driving experience through corners. While it is pretty planted, it just doesn't feel playful. It just seems to just go round. and It doesn't really matter what you're doing. And around town, this car is okay, apart from obviously the suspension having a bit of problem over potholes. It's quite an easy thing. You've got good visibility. It's comfortable in terms of the seats and the driving position. The maneuverability is all right as well. So if you need to do a U-turn or a mini roundabout, you can. The turning circle isn't too big. That's fine. But once again, the steering does feel a little bit on the heavy side for town work. And that brings me back again to the new RS6, which has rear wheel steering as standard, so it's super maneuverable and its steering weight changes depending on what mode you're in and how fast you're going. Now this seems a little bit like a weird review that I'll keep on referring back to the brand new RS6. Well, there's a reason for that. The last car that I drove before this one was the brand new RS6 on its launch in the United States of America. So it's really interesting to jump into this. And in terms of performance, there is nothing really in it. This is right on it. In fact, in some ways I prefer this engine, but the rest of the car really does feel like it's more than 10 years older. And that's actually more of a testament to how much work Audi has done to improve the drivability and feel and fun factor of its latest RS models. So then, what's my final verdict on the Audi RS6 C6? Well, the engine is absolutely wonderful. It's the reason to buy one of these cars, and it is generally very nice to drive. However, it does show you how far Audi has come with the handling and fun factor of its very latest RS models. They are just better in the corners. This must be where it all began back, right, 